and that could be problematic because you're putting analog in that probably was already converted from digital to analog. Now it's getting converted back to digital so they can manipulate it and then convert it back to analog so it'll go into your amp or whatever. always an ongoing conversation about should I or should I not equalize or EQ something like a headphone or whatever. I mean, the two-channel world, those guys already figured out. They pretty much said, F it. We're not EQing anything. But in the headphone world now, it's the same kind of deal where it's like, well, you know, I've tried it before and usually it helps somewhere, hurts other things. So let's just try to hash this real quickly over and why that might be the case. Pretty complex topic. The trouble is it depends on your system, depends on your chain, your headphones, your gear and whatnot. And there are a lot of applications where I think EQ does wonders. And that's why you see it sometimes. You see active EQ built into products, especially closed back noise canceling products. Sometimes they're real problem solvers and you may not be able to disable it, maybe native. But on a high end system, on a dedicated headphone system, there's challenges. I think we should talk about them. Yeah, well, one of them is it just totally depends on the EQ device you're using. So that's a variable. And, I mean, some are better than others, and what else is new, right? So, I mean, <laughs> you know, we've had portable players that have EQ built in, and it's pretty good. Yeah. And we have others that suck. You start EQing more than a couple dB. And but portables have the, could have, especially with our, our headphones, have a different problem, though, and that's if you EQ something up too much, then you could start... You know, clipping. Run out of power. Yeah. yeah. That's the problem with EQ. If you're going upward in some level, particularly in the bass, then you dramatically increase the need for juice. And, yeah, portable devices, even even a lot of desktops will run out. I mean, it depends. You've got to have a pretty book. To, to be able to go up like 5, 6 dB in the bass range, you're talking about, I don't know, double, tripling the power out or something like that. I mean, it's uh, It could be considerable. It's a lot. In a narrow frequency range. You know? And basically the way to think about it is if you need to put the volume up in somewhere because it's lacking, one of the most common things is bass, then the trouble there is it's basically like driving the headphone at a much higher volume only in that region. So maybe the headphone isn't capable of doing that without issues, without distortion. And um, that's the case for a lot of products. So... Yeah, you could sort of technically solve the problem, but you're also limiting the volume you could play it back at. Um, you know, the weakest link thing still applies. If you crank the volume somewhere, well, it doesn't solve the issue. It just kind of moves it around. So now you might have to listen at a lower overall volume to get the, the balance you're looking for in your system. Well, I guess then you got the opposite. You can reduce bass on things, too. Yeah. But mm -hmm. then you don't run into the clipping problem. That works pretty well, though. That yeah. usually works fine. The, usually the chain is totally happy with putting the volume down in regions. And sometimes headphones have a big advantage from that. Or reduce all the other ranges and leave the bass alone. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> can do that, yeah. yeah. Sure. You know, you're, so you're shelving it going that way, kill the highs a bit. And now you got, obviously, you're shifting the tonality, mm -hmm. you know, which is kind of the way you play with systems anyway. You, you mix and match gear until you come up with a balance that you kind of like. But, but yeah, the biggest problem, I think, is that. Uh, the DSPs varies a lot. DSP. The, some people are using DSP chips. I should mention that too. Now that I brought it up, and um, they're if you're running analog into a box or whatever, an external EQ, and you're running analog and, and it's using a DSP, obviously it's got to convert to digital to do that. Yes, and that could be problematic because you're putting analog in that probably was already converted from digital to analog. Now it's getting converted back to digital so they can manipulate it and then convert it back to analog so it'll go into your amp or whatever yeah, and so you could hear it. No one should ever think that that's a perfect process just mm -hmm. because it's digital in one way and not. I mean, yeah. as soon as you convert from analog to digital or digital to analog, that conversion process is fret with horrors. Intrinsically <laughs> problematic. It's not yeah. going to help. It's not going to help the sound, you know. So you could see where you could see where this could all go wrong real easy. Nobody really thinks about how it, the operation of these things because we're we're not engineers. Most people aren't engineers who are sitting there designing the thing. You don't know what it's really doing. You just know you put a signal in, you get a signal out, and I got adjustment. So anyway, that's the biggest problem. So I, most people have come to the conclusion who do use EQ to keep it to a minimum. Mm -hmm. A couple dB. Try to minimize it. Yeah. You, a little bit here and there. But I guess the real bottom line is I don't see what the real problem is. If you want to use it, use it, right? <laughs> If you don't, yeah, you there's a big it. fight for some yeah. reason over this. Yeah, the beauty is you could put it right back. That's right. Especially, especially, yeah. especially yeah. if you have a DAC, a computer, 
it's trivial oftentimes. Now, there's a lot of different implementations of EQs. So you could browse around your preferred forum and see what people are, tend to be very vocal and, and talk about these things and see what they say about them. Um, you could find a solution for you, software solution. Give it a try. See if you like it. Mess around. If you don't like it, just don't use it. Simple, right? Right. That's it. It's real simple. Nothing to argue yeah. about. And I mean, that's what people are doing. I think lately I've seen is, you know, I'll try it. And then you got some people saying, oh, it really helped me. And other people going, mm. mm-hmm. I actually, I tried it for a while. Right. And, and then I they kinda, just turned it off. Yeah. But sometimes I like it. But right. for the most part. And that's, I think well, that's the deal. Yeah. You can use it track by track if you want. It's easy yeah. enough to turn on and off. You get the preset set. Yeah. Right. I don't blame mm-hmm. them. I used to do that back in the day in a two channel world. Mm. Uh, I'd be playing rock and old school rock and roll, which is now course used to be on vinyl back in the day right well they they converted it to digital (laughs) and of course there's no bass and sounds like yeah it just was the format it was never recorded to go on digital just wasn't the recording wasn't made for they weren't thinking like that when they so anyway bottom line is you throw 10 db at at, uh like 30 hertz on some rock and roll on a two chances sounds wonderful fills right out breathes a little life into it Mm. 10 db at 30 yeah so But, you know, if you're not playing that, you got to be able to turn it off. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> cause yeah, it you got, don't want it, it all mucks the time. up the more yeah. modern recordings, <laughs> you know. So, anyway. Sometimes it's like that, though. You have different content that you listen to that intrinsically the way it was recorded at the time, it has limitations that today really stand out. And, yeah, EQ could be wonderful to fix problems like that. So, yeah, I think it's worth a try, but oftentimes you solve one problem and create another. The question is whether or not you notice it and it matters to you. So, Give it a try if you want. Yeah, that's it in a nutshell with EQ. So don't forget, everyone, if you have any ideas or suggestions for us to chat about something, email us, T-O-T-L at abyssheadphones.com. T-O-T-L, top of the line. Other than that, and don't forget, too, by the way, I should mention it. Once in a while, we got to remind people, all of our videos are also show up in podcast format, audio only, on all the major formats. So Mm -hmm. if you're bored in your car... Just ask Siri to uh, play top, Abyss top of the line, and uh, it'll be there. Thanks, everyone, yeah. for watching. Thumbs us up. Yeah.